Now this is something you don't see every day. This is a, a cemetery that's actually in front of the North Carolina Aquarium. These are the graves of Richard Etheridge and his family. The Pea Island Life Saving Station was located on Pea Island in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. It was the first life saving station in the country to have an all black crew, and it was the first in the nation to have a black man, Richard Etheridge, as commanding officer. Richard Etheridge was the first African American to hold the rank of keeper of a life saving station. So this meant that under the racial standards at the time, the entire crew under his command would have to be black. Although other black men had served as surfmen at Pea Island and other stations, Pea Island Station came to be manned entirely by a black keeper and crew. The other LSS stations in North Carolina as well as throughout the nation would be manned and run by whites. Given the scrutiny he and his men were under, Etheridge knew that the slightest error could result in his or one of his crewmen's dismissal. The inadequacies, no matter how small, could result in the reinstatement of a white keeper and crew. So he ran the station with military ardor. All of his vigorous and exacting preparation paid off on the terrible night of October 11, 1896, when the schooner E.S. Newman grounded south of the station. captain of the vessel and his wife and three-year-old daughter on board when it was driven ashore during a hurricane on October 11, 1896. The storm was so bad that Keeper Etheridge had suspended beach patrols. Still from the station, a surfman, Theodore Meekins, thought he saw a distress signal and fired off a costume flare to see if there would be a response. Meekins and Etheridge watched carefully and saw the schooner acknowledge with the flare of her own. The P. Island crew, with the help of a mule team, then pulled the beach cart with the rescue equipment and surf boat along the beach towards where the distress signal had been seen. Huge waves washing ashore made this especially difficult. Finally, when the crew arrived at the scene of the wreck, they found that the wave conditions were so great that the surf boat could not be launched, nor could a breech's buoy be used because the beach was so inundated by waves that the anchor for the buoy line could not be placed in the sand. Two surfmen volunteered to swim out in the waves to attempt to reach the wreck. They eventually did reach the schooner and managed to heave a line aboard. Nine times the surfmen went into the water and one by one the passengers and crew were all rescued, starting with the captain's three-year-old daughter. According to local lore, Meekins, 
who was reputedly the best swimmer of the group, made every voyage out to the Newman. In the following days, the Newman's captain searched for and found the piece of the side that held the vessel's name and donated it to the crew as an offering put in his thanks. For a century, this would be the only reward the P. Allen crew received for their efforts. Etheridge served as keeper at Pea Island for 20 years. In January 1900, as Orville and Welper Wright were planning their voyage to Kitty Hawk to experiment with human flight, Etheridge, at the age of 58, fell ill and died at the station. Pea Island continued to be manned by an all-black crew through the Second World War. The station was decommissioned in 1947. One of the last surviving surfmen to serve at the station, William Charles Bowser died at the age of 91 on June 28, 2006. Herbert Collins, who served in the 1940s and put the locks on the station when it was closed, died on Sunday, March 14, 2010. In 1996, the Coast Guard awarded the Gold Life Saving Medal posthumously to the keeper and crew of the Pea Island Station for the rescue of the people of the E.S. Newman.